Alright, welcome for everyone who's watching already. Uh, it's me, Triple V, Johnny and Aaron here today. So, uh, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> we are doing a live stream right before our TOS SG event, which is happening tomorrow. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to share with everyone how to pass if you're still stuck on stage 3, uh, seal 3, sorry, or seal 4. We're going to be going through some uh, valuable tips and information to get everyone through that. But uh, I think in the meantime, we'll just, uh, in case you guys aren't aware of how to bring up this menu, you just need to hold your stamina orb and draw it up like that. So we're going to go through the daily update, I mean, standard stuff, right? Start it off with your daily update. So what do we have first? <clears throat> Reward notice. Uh, 1 million download celebration event, 50 t bottles of Time Sand. Any thoughts on Time Sand, Aaron? <laughs> we need more Time Sand. Yes. To be very honest, not just when it goes all the way below like 0 or below 5, yeah? is it below yeah, 5? It was below then 5. you start to generate Time Sands during the event. But that was only during the event, right? So now after the event, there's no more. So uh, yeah, we are trying to lodge strong feedback to get more Time Sand for everyone. So not to worry. In the meantime, you'll just have to keep collecting your supplies on time. So yeah, and the next one will be for the login rewards. So there's what one time stone for every day for two weeks. Total of 14 time stones. Yep. Uh, what else have we got here? Make your first time stone summon during the event to receive five time stones. So what did you get for this draw? What did I get? Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think I got Hades. But oh, you're yeah, Hades. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. not, not really a fan of Nihility, but yes, then, neither am uh, I. <laughs> you still have to build up the Nihility team along the way, so yeah, yeah I ain't complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I think I got um, I got a Honda or something. No, I didn't get a Honda. Key I... Honda. Huh? Key Honda. Honda. You know, I just called the car the Honda. The, the Thunder. The Thunder guy. Yeah, Honda. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, uh, I don't think I got a Honda. I got something else, which I think was totally useless, which is why it doesn't even register what I got. So, any case, oh, I got the Thunder Ninja, the guy who converts up to six Thunder Runestones. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yesterday and the day before was extremely boring and mind numbing, just farming for the mushrooms. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, if you guys haven't done so this week, 13th of June to 26th of June, you have two weeks to collect five time stones. And all you need to do is do a summon, and you'll be getting five time stones as a rebate. So, it's basically like a free draw, but you need five time stones to do it. Yeah, so. Okay, we're on to our most exciting event of the week, which is Hero Summoning. Uh, why don't you take away on this one? <laughs> right, so this week, uh, I think it's pretty much... Um, last week we have Water, right, Water Bonus. This week we have Fire, so it's pretty much going to be like Wind the following week. Right, so this week we have uh, two cards which is up on Bonus or Increase Chance. Right, it's not 100%. Remember guys, so... increased chance is not guaranteed chance. So every time I see a post about why am I not getting this, it's an increased chance, alright? By how much, we don't know, and how's the total amount, we also don't know. So just keep drawing away, and uh, what, what's up for grabs this week? Yeah, this week we have uh, Deity of the Sun, Amaterasu, as well as Drunken Shuten Doji. Okay, yes. so Shuten Doji is definitely, I think, going to be one of the key players, MVP, in the teams we're going to use today. Uh, we're just going to demonstrate how awesome he really is and in fact if you we'll, we'll go through it later but if you look at his attack stat at level 99 he's got something like 5700 attack which compared to other cards is like a 1.5 times multiplier so he's pretty strong and you if you have one or even more of him your attack stat for your team skyrockets and it will just help you through all the way isn't that right Aaron? yeah i don't i don't <laughs> think there's any flaws for shit technology right? Like, right great leader skill yeah great active skill and stats Amazing stats. Yes. Right, so if you get it, then good for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Keep the time stone summons coming, right? You got three days left to go for it. So, uh, yep. Yeah, we'll go on with the rest. Alright. So this is like the more <clears throat> grindy event of the entire week, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Minus fifty percent stamina for all uh, mushroom stages and yokai evolved materials. Is that right? Yes, so all the UK materials. So if you guys aren't aware yet, uh, basically every time you evolve uh, one of your heroes, uh, there's going to be two evolve mats involved. So the first one will be according to its attribute. Uh, that's what the mushrooms are for. So depending on which attribute you're evolving, let's say you're evolving the Hility, you're going to need the Dark and the Hility mushroom. If you're evolving Thunder, you'll need a Thunder mushroom. So that's the first evolve mat which will be evolved. 
The second one will be these Yukai series. Now, uh, Yukai series will be dependent on race. So, uh, human will be using the taros, you know, the yeah, taros, the purple ones. Uh, <laughs> the dragons will be using the drakes, which is the blue ones. And I think the biggest one is like on a cucumber or something. Yep. <laughs> Maybe like a white radish. I don't know, the vegetables are really random, so it's a little <laughs> hard to remember them. Okay, the, uh, the wind one is easy because it's on a kiwi. That one I remember. And um, I think the fire one is riding like a beetroot or something, right? That's for the creature series, right? Creature, yeah. creature yeah. race. So fire, uh, the fire yukai will be for the creature series. The wind one will be for gods. And <clears throat> the water one is for which one? Dragons. Water for dragons, yeah. So and this there's explains why there's no... Um, thunder one. There's no thunder so because currently, so far there's only four races. Yep. Yeah, so who knows, right? Like Tower Saviors. <laughs> yeah. The last minute edition of Demon Race. I think it's definitely in the works. I've seen some rumors and murmurings. I think it's going to be some mech race kind of thing. Uh, because the Evolve map for the Thunder one is actually like some robot looking thing. So I think we can look forward to some mech race coming in and who knows what kind of stats it will have. Because currently, you all know humans have the best recovery, uh, creatures have the best attack. Dragons have the biggest hit points and gods are kind of just evenly spread. So wonder what the mech race will look like. But we also don't know when they'll come out. So we'll see how that goes, yeah? Let's keep the hype up. Yeah. Keep right, so next we have a Forest Trial. So this is a bunch of um, missions, I guess. Right? And every time you clear it, you get rewards. Right, so... Oh, where do you go? <laughs> so Forest Trial, we have uh, A to E, that is what? Five. Yep. So you got to clear them uh, in chron chronological uh, sequence. You can't get rewards for B, C, D, or E unless you clear A. So uh, if you guys are wondering, this one is time warp with four its help eight times. I think that should be too difficult. You guys should all know how to time warp if you have sand, sand, time stamp, right? <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since we already have like the dumpling, the dumpling event, right? It should be warping more than eight times. Yes. It shouldn't be an issue. So you should know how that works already. Uh, I think C is where most people are stuck on, cumulatively defeat 42 star Yukai creeps. If you keep entering the endless wheel, you will be getting quite a few uh, defeats of Yukai creeps, because I think the first 9 stages or something just full of Yukai. So just keep doing that, you'll hit your 40 within no time. Yep. Alright, so uh, I think the rest you guys can read through in your own time, but uh, from what we understand is that uh, most of you are still stuck on stage 3, uh, seal 3 sorry. So we're going to tackle the seal 3 boss um, and show you guys you know, how, what kind of things to avoid or look through and uh, how we're going to beat it. So we're going to play with our creature team. So creature team of course will be allying to Mamo for most effective uh, refined runestones. And uh, Shudan Dochi takes the lead, so he will have the elimination skill of restore hit points by 75% team recovery for 3 combos made, as well as creatures attack times too, and all these are creatures. So you see the attack stat is nice and high, we add up this 20,000, 11,470... What is that, 1,000? <laughs> We've got 32,000 attack here, so of course most people don't have 2 Tamamos lying around and everything, so... Uh, but in case, we're gonna try it out and we're gonna walk you guys through how to... Uh, avoid some of the more difficult stages and what to look out for. Alright, so here is Seal 3. The illusion of a goddess. Although the Rune Master stopped the artifact, Gaia, the mother of Earth, has suddenly attacked them, seeking to seize the runic power. The creator's malice was obvious from her aggressiveness. This Gaia hoped not only to stop the Rune Master, she wanted their death. The Rune Master and the heroes must push on regardless of whether the typically kind Gaia was under another's control or whether it was an illusion. Uh, should we turn up the sound? Sound here. No. Alright, so if you guys aren't in the habit of doing this, um, you should always check the mobs to see if they have any skills or abilities. For this one here, it's pretty obvious when you look at it, because uh, usually next to the number one, there'll be like a little black box, and that black box has like a little white logo in it. So for all these guys, they have nothing inside. Okay, 
Okay, before we continue, I think it's important to note also that uh, please remember your attributes. Now I know everyone's a huge fan of Nihility because Nihility attacks with everything dissolved. However, Nihility has a 75% handicap towards other attributes. Whereas uh, in the long run, the best ideal way of going about this is to have one of each of these attributes done up. So remember by tapping these, you can see the different multipliers towards. So let's say we're playing with the majority water team here. We'll be dealing 200% damage to any fire attributes, 50% only to any thunder, and 150% to any nihility. And wind, since it's not indicated, it's just 100%. So it's really important to build up. So out of these four attributes, which one have you got? Uh, I would say I made a stable team yep. because I have two, two of the four uh, attributes that is at the opposite side of the weakness chart. Okay. It is water and wind. So right. with this, I can use water to tackle fire and water. Yep. And wind to tackle thunder and wind itself. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. If you can get the opposite pairing going on, you pretty set. You need at least two uh, mono attribute teams to really get things going. In any case, we're playing a mono creature team, so uh, you can keep them entertained, Aaron, while I focus on swiping <laughs> these runes. Yeah. yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite uh, interested to play this mono creature team as well because so far, uh, I've been playing mono colors and mono attributes only. So, yeah, it's gonna be my turn soon later. <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's see. So I'm basically running like a pseudo water and fire team here. Right, am I right to say that? Yes. A majority water team. I'm not screwed up my Majority chain. <laughs> um, water attribute. Yeah. yeah. So I guess for this stage there shouldn't be any issue because since Gaia is win, right? You have the extra damage from shoot and dodgy, 200%. Yep. 200% damage from shoot and the two shoot and. and uh, the four water cards are basically doing 100% damage, so there's no sort of uh, weakness involved in this battle. Um, if you are excluding the mini mobs, of course. So you see what I'm doing, I'm really just focusing on swiping a lot of the refined runestones, and um, especially for Tamamo's leader skill, it's the same as the uh, elimination skill, sorry, it's the same as all the Norse series, which is they'll give you double the amount of refined runestones, which is very, very, very powerful. Uh, I think the only other non Norse card to have this elimination skill will be Rin, so other than Tamamo. So if you guys drew Rin as your starter, or if you have a Rin lying around, you should definitely train her up, because she can be a really strong uh, mono water leader as well. So okay, uh, we're on stage 3 here, and we still haven't come across anything significant. All these are just kind of your ability, uh, sorry, your little end. Uh, Max as well as some little priestess, they still don't have any unique skills. I'm sure later during Aaron's run, you're gonna see uh, more interesting creeps. So I'm kind of just uh, clearing the first wake here uh, for Aaron to follow up on later. Okay. Yeah, so for third seal, or, or rather you want to call it third seal, so basically the battle is uh, consisting of all, you, you call it mini mobs, I guess. Uh, no skills involved whatsoever. So this. Uh, what, you, what you can do is just to rack up as much combo and chain as possible because remember that at the end result uh, it, it actually calculates like the average combo and chain so you pretty much have to dish out a decent amount of chains and combo every single battle. Yep, so in order for uh, score high rank as Aaron mentioned you'll need to be very consistent in chain and combo. Okay, so this is what I mentioned, uh, next to the numbers on the other side of hit points bar you'll see there's a little black icon there, uh, black background with a white icon, it's a sort of 2 up, so if you don't know what that means, because I don't know what that means, I mean do you know what that means by looking at it? No, no right. Help. It's like, it's he got two swords, because he's got like a sickle thing, he doesn't have any swords, so alright, let's read what it says. So he's attribute and ability, he's got attack of 4.5 thousand, defense not really significant. Okay, uh, the lower the hit points of the enemy, the higher its attack to so the max of three times. So this is an enemy you don't want to screw up on. You want to make sure you kill him straight away. And as you've seen, we've saved up two diamond rune stones. Uh, we could save it for the boss, but this is the kind of guy you don't want to screw up on, right? Because if he hits for three times the amount, uh, you'll be hitting for about 13,000. We won't die, but if your team has less than 13,000 hit points, you will die. So <laughs> this is one of the stages you want to make sure you don't screw up on. So I'm going to most likely use up probably just one of the diamond rune stones. I think should be enough, right? I don't think 
I'll just go for it. Use use everything. <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Right, so um if I'm not wrong, this mob, once you chip off one third of his HP, his damage goes up to 10k. So I remember getting one hit killed by this mob before because my team HP wasn't past 10k last time. Right, and then um one important thing is that um to make use of all the time all the the platinum runes, the gold runes that you have, the refined runes that you have on the spot. Right? Because having a refined multiplier uh, il eliminate skill, it's very easy to uh, form back the platinum runes that you have 23, 22. Do you use two? Uh, platinum? I think I only use one. Yeah, you see? Uh, you, can form, you can form back a uh, platinum rune yeah. with this uh, Tamamo's it's, eliminate It's your skill. typical, like, you know, spend money to make more money kind of concept. Uh, so yeah, definitely keep spamming the eliminations uh, rune stones because uh, you know with your refined rune stones, getting the elimination skill is really important. One important thing in Chronos Gate is that you 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 can't be selfish with the refined rune stones. It's there you have to use it because along the way you generate ah. more. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, we need to close the notifications. No worries, we can still continue. I don't think we lost our chain. I mean, even if we did, these mobs are pretty easy. So, yeah. Plus oh, one if you guys have died to <laughs> notifications before. You're like, swipe, 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 and then that thing comes up, you can't see the preview, which is really important, and you can't see what's gonna drop. Anyway, we, we took it away, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's one important part of Chrono's game. Yeah, let's, let's, just... <laughs> let's wait for all the spam to finish, and uh, is there any way to... Okay, swipe it up. You wanna mute that? Uh, we, can, we can mute that later. Just tell whoever's spamming the stuff. Oh. Someone from your guild. <laughs> Stop spamming guys, we're gonna shut off the notifications soon, okay. Uh, right, so none of these mobs have anything special, we're just gonna go for it. So all of these are, uh, if you guys take a look at the, the mobs here, they are actually so-called yokais. And so if you guys are not done with Borat trial, you can actually do up or enter third seal to take down a bit of these two-star yokai. Right, these, these are those? Um, what was it These called? are one star. One star. You guys and and mats. If you guys notice, I swapped away two gold refined stones there. <laughs> if you're wondering <laughs> why, <laughs> okay. Uh, before we go ahead with the story, if you're wondering why, it's because if you accidentally enter fever mode or fever buff before the boss stage, you can be in a really bad position because now you don't have any diamond rune stones. You'll need at least a turn to make more back, and um, yeah, you just it's a bad position to be in. So sometimes. Like just now, right? If I hadn't swiped away those two gold rune stones, I would have ended up with three diamond rune stones, and that would have been the end because <laughs> we'd be coming to the stage. I think most of the time it needs behind just one gold block, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, at the at the worst, it's going to two be silver. two silver. Yeah, so. I've been left with two silver, one gold, staring down the boss, going, <laughs> "I wasn't prepared for this outcome." All right. So Philly says, "Who are you?" Gaia says, "Give me the chest. I will spare your lives." Forget it, how dare you pretend to be your mighty Gaia. Alright, so let's double check Gaia's skill because we see that she's got a special skill here. Black background and white icon in the scene. Alright, enemy randomly detonates 2 to 4 refined rune stones with each dealing 2000 damage. So what happens if you have no refined rune stones? You just get the base attack which is 4k. 4000, 4, yeah. yeah. So the moral of the story, I guess they're trying to teach you from a very early point on in the third seal here. Guys, use up all your refined rune stones, okay? There's no reason for you to hold back here. So, I'm guessing we're gonna get a pretty good uh, swipe time. With the amount of refined rune stones here, we have an additional 10 seconds from the diamond. We're definitely gonna get another 8 from the other refined rune stones, so we're gonna get probably like 30 seconds of swipe time here. So I'm gonna focus, I'll let Aaron ramble you guys through this part, yeah? <laughs> so basically, Gaia stage here... Uh... The main part is to, if you guys can't want it to away, like make sure you swipe off all your refinery stones. Right, and I, I guess that's what I did for the first few, first few runs, like the first attempt or so. Right, I didn't manage to want it kill Gaia, but um, before the timer runs out, I swipe all my refinery stones away. Like to the max, you can leave at least uh, at the most one or two. So when you detonate, you are gonna get like 8k damage, right, which is a lot. And if you guys do not have a recovery eliminate skill, right, you're gonna be in deep trouble. Okay, I lost my chain halfway through there. Uh, wasn't really focusing on the 
Preview. But anyway, <laughs> she's dead because she's third seal. But hey, uh, guys, if you suck on third seal, uh, really, there's not much to be ashamed about. It's just a process of getting there. Um, just really make sure you read up on what this enemy skills does because I'm sure many of you guys have suddenly died on I think stage 4 where the mini boss comes up. So remember to read the skills, remember to use um, elemental advantage, uh, attribute advantage and uh, yeah, bring in the right team members, I think that's really important. Okay, so as you know, you got to choose some dialogue options. So what is that? Not sure but someone must be planning on something you couldn't see. Why does it matter? We only defeated. Yeah, why does it matter? <laughs> so. <laughs> Alright, perhaps you're right, something feels weird, blah de blah, okay? I'm sure you guys have read through the story, some of you. Okay, so that's third seal done. Any other tips you can think of for those who are still stuck on third seal? I think the most important part of Chronos Gate, or not really Chronos Gate, or any any sort of game is to make sure you read the enemy skill very carefully. Because I know a lot of players, once they reach the next wave, they start swiping goods without even reading the enemy skill, which end up leading to their death somehow. You know, like some, some enemy skills require, require you to uh, dissolve like 9 water runes or 9 fire runes, something like that. So if you're running a wind team, you're focusing on dissolving wind and you didn't meet the requirement, then yeah. Pretty much it. So pay attention to attributes as well as uh, enemy skills. Okay, so we got an S rank here. As you can see, most of the score will generally come from the amount of rounds you use. So the, uh, the least the less rounds you use, the more points you're going to score. So that will incentivize you guys hopefully to do a one hit KO every round. Uh, basically every turn just finish off the mobs. I think the second biggest contributor will come from chain. Um, yeah, the amount of chain you can maintain throughout the stage will give you the second highest score. And you can see that it's kind of a combination between combo and damage from there on out. Okay, so that's third seal done. Uh, for those of you who already passed third seal, we're going to move on to fourth seal, which is going to be done by Aaron. Alright, we got a cock to beat, so let's go for it. Alright, so Uranus is... <laughs> oh my gosh, do I have... Uh, <coughs> we have Sorel, Sorel Ally. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Plenty. Alright, so... As I mentioned earlier, I, um, I do own a win team. So, I'm gonna go in with this Freya team. Because personally, I use Freya as a leader, and Sorel as a... Ally. So Pretty strong combination, that's what Exactly the same scenario of yeah. Team setup. Just the five member, times member multiplier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can see for Fox Seal it's gonna be a bit different. You can see the every mob have skills and they're all <laughs> Yeah, they all got skills. So if you guys uh, aren't sure, definitely double check to see what's going on. Yep, and one so... more tip is you can actually multi-swipe. Alright, so if you guys actually have a plan can go ahead and multi swipe the first few rooms and then. Yeah, so while Aaron focuses on playing, um, yeah, pretty much for fourth seal, you wanna make sure you're double checking all the enemy skills behind, reading them up, um, and you know, if all us fails, you can always use brute force, but some shields can't be overcome by brute force, so. Uh, over here, you see Aaron will focus a lot more on the left elimination skill, because right now he's just trying to build up more refined rune blocks. And building up refined rune stones will generally be using uh, any of the Norse, Tambamo, or Rin to really accomplish that. Once you've got about two diamond rune stones staked up, I think you're good to go for the rest. You can just kind of use uh, your refined rune stones for the other leader, or you know, even if you. I mean, you should definitely use them every turn. So that's when you can kind of alternate, maybe use your other side. So I can see here Aaron's a right hand player, so whether he's swiping right or left, he'll use his right hand. For me, I'm kind of like a, a two, two hand player. If I'm swiping more to the left for that round, I'll be using my left hand. If really? I, yeah. I, I discovered that it's actually easier for me to play using my left hand if I'm swiping left. Because uh, I, I use my thumbs. I don't know about you guys, maybe you guys can leave a comment of whether you use your finger or use your thumb. For me, I'm a thumb swiper, so uh, for me to swipe to the left with my right hand is quite difficult. So I use my left hand thumb to kind of swipe away with that. And uh, of course, when I'm swiping to the right, I'll use my right hand. So I don't know what your preference is, leave it in the comments. Do you guys use your thumb, your finger, or you use your toes or your tongue? I don't know. <laughs> interesting, interesting stuff can come up in this. So yeah, um, with wind, you're going to have an uh, advantage against the boss Uranus, because Uranus is thunder element. And I think wind overall have a very bulky HP. 
So which is why I like using wind. Yeah. I mean, for most of the teams, if you train them up, uh, the hit points are going to be pretty decent. Uh, we are looking at my fully trained up fire team is around 20 plus thousand, like 21 or 22,000 when allied up. So I think one of the cards is still not maxed. So it's like 5 out of 6 max, and it's like 27,000. Yep. And for if you're using Sariel, um, the Fallen Angel, the Wind One, uh, you want to make sure that. Uh, you're maintaining a chain of 6 and above. If not, her 2.5 ball supply is going to become 1. <laughs> you're not going to get anything. So basically, basically you're not getting any multiplier from Sariel, so you're just basically using Freya's times 2 leader skill, which is not a lot of damage. Okay, so we got an uh, interesting mob here. He just took a free shot at us. Let's see what he does. Right, so it's basically initial attack from this Megalodon. First strike, alright? Enemy attacks first. And there are. So he hits for about how much? 9,154. Well, I can so actually take one more hit, but let's not take the release, so let's just yeah. cover it. <laughs> so if you guys are heading into the stage, make sure your hit points is above 9,154. Uh, if not, you're gonna pretty much die on this round straight away. Without having to do anything, you will die. So make sure that uh, yeah, you guys heal up. In case you guys aren't sure, uh, runes, hard rune stones are generated every time you dissolve each runestone once. So if you dissolve a fire, uh, water, fire, earth, uh, water, fire, wind, and thunder, you will be getting one heart runestone block. Okay, which you can always swipe away and save for later turns if you don't need it that turn, which is what I recommend you guys do. Uh, but if you need to use it, just you know you can dissolve it with any other type of uh, runestone block. I think they made it that way because they don't want you to purposely swipe everything for your color to come down. Yeah. Some sort. Yeah. So. Uh, when you're playing mono attributes, you're going to focus a lot heavily on the color and uh, I think one of the downsides of doing that sometimes is that you're going to be short on hard runestone blocks. So if you're short on hit points and you don't have converters in a team that can make hard runestone blocks or if um, you don't have active skills which heal up hit points, you're going to need to remember that hard runestone blocks aren't dropping because you're not dissolving all the other colors. So in this instance, uh, Aaron's playing with a mono wind, and if he wants to generate more hard runestone blocks, he's gonna have to dissolve all the water, fire, thunder. And, uh, I think some stages where you see, for example, this stage, everything's on cooldown two and above. You can actually afford to not attack them for one round and just generate the hard runestone blocks if you need to. But um, generally speaking, if you're aiming for S. S score and above, you just want to whack it's away. It's gonna be a one shot, one kill kind. Yeah, I think at most you can afford one round where you don't kill everything. Uh, and that's about it. The rest of the time, you just gotta make sure you are just going full speed ahead. So, yeah, I think we are almost at the end. This is the second last stage or something. And uh, we're making pretty good progress. Our hit points are fully healed up already. And yeah, as mentioned, with the serial, all you need is a chain of six and above. Combined with the Freyas times 2, you'll be getting a 5 times multiplier, which is definitely one of the higher multipliers in the game right now. And, uh, this should be the second last stage before the boss. I think for now, the highest multiplier is actually times 3. Right? There's, times... A, there's a Trojan, there's a Trojan place now, if I'm not wrong. Uh, is the it times 3 or times 2.5? The lower the HP, the higher the attack. Okay, I think, yeah, I think I saw something like that. So, I mean, theoretically, you could get to a times 9, but so dangerous, right? <laughs> you gotta make sure you're constantly like really low hit points and uh, maintain okay. the point. I guess I'm in a very good stand for Uranus now. Hopefully I can one kill him. So how, how do I practice uh, S rank personally? I try to one shot, one kill every battle and I'm leaving uh, a one turn window for the boss. So in case that I don't want to kill the boss, I have one more turn to spare. Yes. Right, so almighty oh, Uranus, why are you opposing us? So. Um, there must be some reason why you're seeking to stop us. Right, so if you want answers, you must defeat me. Sure. Alright, so um so from I would say there's a the leap there's a leap of difficulty from Gaia to, to Uranus. So here Gaia or oh, Uranus actually randomly turns runestone into chaos runestone in proportion of number of five runestones present in the tower to the next tree. So note that these so-called chaos runes only appear at the end of that particular turn. So if you actually want to kill it, then I don't think it matters, right? No worries, right? Because if he's dead, he can't convert any of your runestones to anything. He's just going to be gone. So uh, we'll let Aaron focus on his playing. But uh, yeah, pretty much if you guys are looking to try uh, beat the fourth seal here and you're stuck, 
Uh, see if you have a win team, I'd say that's probably the first thing you can look at. And if you have a win team, it will make your job so much easier for the Uranus boss stage. And uh, if you're using, I think, water team, it's probably like the worst option because you're going to have to do double the amount of damage to Uranus just to kill him compared to other teams. And uh, yeah. Oh, I don't think I can. <laughs> no worries, I think it's still kind of salvageable. Yeah, I messed up big time. But yeah, here comes it. You didn't make the Chaos Resonance? No. That's weird. Is it a bug? Okay. <laughs> we got saved by a bug, but... <laughs> okay, I played the Sage, uh, I think last week on live stream, and uh, yeah. If you don't one shot kill him, he's gonna turn a bunch of your refined runestones into like purple Chaos Runestones, which is uh, pretty nasty stuff. I'll be honest, when I was looking at it, I have no idea what's was going on. Some of them got like weird little numbers and timers and stuff on them. So yeah, um, as, as Aaron mentioned, the best thing is uh, try to one hit kill every round so that on the boss stage, if you happen to just be short or kind of screw up on it, at least you got one more round to make up for that. Yeah, so you guys see, I did a one, one shot, one kill every battle until the boss, which took me two turns. So that is basically all the window that I made for myself. Yep. Right, so Ad admittedly, it would have been a bit harder with chaos reserve, but hey, it don't <laughs> happen. So we're not asking any questions. If you guys get lucky like that, then I guess it's fine as well. Okay, so that's third seal done, and this is fourth seal. So for those of you who haven't passed yet, that's what it will look like. Okay, it's so still an S rank despite uh, not one shot taking away the boss. So if you can maintain a high chain and combos for every round, gets the boss, you'll be fine. Yeah, so you can see my average combo is actually 14 and then 11 for chain. Right, so that should be like the pretty much the average combo and chain you should be doing per round uh, in order to get like a battle rank or a battle score of 46k. Sweet, okay. So I think the next one is uh, gonna be a little bit more pressure. <laughs> okay, we're gonna also share with you guys how to uh, play through the endless wheel. So the wheel of trials. Okay, we're gonna use the creature team we were using earlier and the main reason is we really want to showcase the power of the Shuten Doji. Shuten Doji is tasty, okay? So if you guys haven't drawn yet, uh, you've got some time stones lying around and you're looking to draw a strong uh, card, definitely draw Shuten Doji because what's not to love? Uh, high attack stats, I mean let's look at them quickly. 5735, I don't think any other card comes you know, quite as close, I think a Tamamo comes close but the top still belongs to Shuten Doji right now. He can lead you a creature team, which currently all the bi-weeklies are creature drops, and he can also form a really valuable member in any mono fire team. So definitely pick one up guys while you have the higher rate, which is the next three days left. So if you have time zones left and you wanna use them, go ahead. It's very tempting to do another draw. <laughs> Don't worry, you still got another two days. We got a weekend man. Saturday is very long, you know, Sunday is very long. And before you know it, you will pull out your phone. The time zone will be calling to you. It's sad, it's sad to get like two tail chan in the Well, <laughs> it's always sad, but uh, what to do, man? That, that's just how things go, isn't it? Alright, so I'm just gonna focus on uh, clearing through the first few stages as quickly as possible. So, we can... as Johnny mentioned, uh, Endless Wheel the stage uh, he's playing now have plenty of low time off so this is where you clear the forest rounds <laughs> yeah the third mission mission c which is clear 40 and above you can't uh, the first few stages we're not really going to comment on because as you can see they don't even have any abilities they're pretty much just here to make yourself feel really good at dishing out lots of damage to them uh, and also you can store you can stop some cool uh, cp with his cumulated power or skills and uh, you know, before you advance and go through. But generally speaking, this team's uh, CP is all pretty good, so there's no real need for us to go through that. So as of now, I think for this team, the only non farmable skill is Tamamo. Right? Uh, she can dodge can be paired with... Uh, what? Large fire and mats. Yeah. Large fire and materials. And we have the water ninja. Yeah. Okay which can be fed using the large mushroom. blue mushroom. Right? I, I think we're all scared of mushrooms now, right? <laughs> For the past few weeks, we've been farming mushrooms because of 50% uh, stamina off. Yeah, stamina off. So I managed to farm up 
my win win assassin. <coughs> yeah. yeah. I also found my win assassin and then halfway through my Thunder one I was like you know the in Chinese got Jin Zheng Gu. <laughs> it's like a steamboat staple, right? So every time everyone goes steamboat, you you can't do a steamboat without those. I think yesterday must have been a popular steamboat day because they weren't dropping quite as much as the other mushrooms. I think ah uh, that notification thing is gonna hopefully not kill us. Well, at least now if the yokai stage is not that bad. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be the crucial stage for. There's like a certain a selected few crucial stage for this endless view. Okay, for for now, it's all good. You can take this chance to actually store up your active skill. Okay, so it's good to <coughs> actually train your active skill for those that actually have feeder cards, so you can actually utilize some active skill. And I know that endless view is very long, so somehow you can still pull off a few active skills right? if I'm talking about weekly battle which is yeah, which has only like uh six six battles right it's unlikely you're gonna use any active skills if you don't train them because it's gonna be CP 16? 16 or 17 yeah. so it's good to train up those that you can especially converters Okay, there's not much point making more of fun users now. We already got a huge amount of them. And I don't want to keep having to swipe away gold, so I'm gonna play with using my left hand a bit just to show you guys uh, the kind of recovery that you can achieve with Shudan Doji, which is pretty juicy stuff, if you ask me. So, personally, I, uh, for my water team, I run a rehab Twitch uh, as Ally. So we have three doing the times two uh, refine rune stones and then we have in eliminate skill is actually recovery. So we have a very balanced uh, some sort of team set up here. I think the same scenario here with Shuten Doji and Kamamu. And so you can go for the refine rune stones for Kamamu uh, eliminate skill and then if you need some sort of recovery you can make use of Shuten Doji's uh, eliminate skill. Okay, so you see in a round you can recover up to 7,000, which is quite a fair bit. We might need that in one of the stages later, I think it's stage 16 or 17 to uh, kind of stall up it. But for the time being, yeah, I'm gonna switch back to it. Okay. See, for normal, I think like the first mid, so called mid boss for endless move is uh, L10, is it? I think so, we should be coming up on the one with soon. Jake. Jake the Bull and Mas Masudon, the elephant. Oh no. Low no battery man, you gotta charge your phone. How can you bring a non charged phone to this live stream? <laughs> Alright. Stage 8. Okay, keep getting over notifications. So um, if you guys are wondering where I'm looking when I'm swiping, if something is dissolving in the tower, usually I'll be looking at the preview to see what's going to be coming up. So you have a kind of a uh, rough idea of what you need to swipe away. Now there's no way you can actually really like count what's coming. So you you got to be pretty quick at picking out um, you know a cluster of colors. Like you see currently there's two red ones. You kind of in the corner of your eye you see that there's two red and acknowledge that quickly and see if there's any red currently in your stack that you can be uh, dissolving them together with. So as an example there, I'll just I'll know I need to swap away yellow, uh, thunder and so on. Okay, and usually you'll find your chain breaks like just now mine did when I wasn't looking at the preview to see what's coming up next. So definitely use that to your maximum advantage. Oh, are you going to fever? I think so, yeah. <laughs> How many fever can you... Okay. <laughs> How many people can you pull off in one endless view? Yeah, share in the comments how many you guys have all done because uh, I, I tend not to do it because endless wheel takes a bit of time to play and uh, if you keep entering fever it, it takes quite a while for it to finish animating. I think personally I pull off uh, 3 fever modes for endless view. Was there like some sort of achievement for it? 
Yeah, there was one where you had to do it at least one time. Uh, we managed to... Okay, so we've done it one time already. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to do it too many more times. Because uh, most of the time, right, in my opinion, using your diamond box is much more uh, valuable. Okay, so on our first mini boss stage, which is Jake. Jake is a vanilla mob. Jake has no ability, so we will ignore Jake. Uh, we'll look at Mastodon, who has enemy attacks twice each time. So 3, 3, 2, 9 times 2. The attack for about 6,000 plus, and Jake is another 6,000 plus. So not going to be too much of an issue for us, I imagine. So I think this is going to be like one of the so-called barriers for players that have very low HP. And personally, uh, I encountered this uh, as a problem because I was running mono water with not much burst power and I did manage to take down Mastodon, which is the elephant. So notice Jake is at CD3 and then um, somehow uh, Mastodon will be on CD1 uh, permanently. So if both leave CD1 and then you're yeah, gonna be in deep trouble. Yeah. But hopefully you can just bash through them like that. Then you'll be encountered with uh, more trash mob stages which should be okay for everyone's handle. Combos here. So once again, it's really important to keep uh, looking at the preview and seeing what's coming up next because if you've got two currently in the stack and the third one isn't even the preview, you should just get rid of those two because um, your real estate in your stack is really important. You only have uh, you know a space for 13 and if half of that's being taken up by refined runestones like you can see here, you have so little space to work with. You need to plan ahead really well and uh, kind of find what you're looking for quickly. Which is why I tend to swipe off uh, gold and platinum runes because uh, after that we can just let the bronze and silver just align, align with each other and then we'll just form more platinum and gold runes at the end of the turn. What better are we at now? Alright, I think we're on 13 or 14. Okay, right, so we are it. on the dock here. It's got nothing special off the either. Okay, we're just gonna zoom through the rest guys, so try to keep up here. Okay, I think I can stop now. He should be dead, right? He's not dead after this, I'm not gonna say. Actually, Nihok doesn't have much HP, so he's just slightly anti defense. I think he absorbed a bit of damage there. But... Okay, we're on a battle of 14. Uh, so as you see, Nidhogg, nothing special, just a bit of high defense. Battle of 14, uh, this guy here on the right, enemy attack increases the number of attacks. Let's target the Poison Mist girl first. And use a convert, just because we can. Uh, and I swiped the wrong rune, which is <laughs> terrible, but hey, it happens. Close to <laughs> okay, we didn't manage to kill her, but we won't die, that's fine. Took a bit of hit. Uh, we're probably going to use up all our refined moonstones here. Not all. Donji team, one of the more challenging parts will be launching off a of full attack. And because you have two colors, which means that you need to pull off five, you need to dissolve five fire and five water in order to actually do a full, a full team attack. The wall. <laughs> okay, that's fine, we can heal up. So, so now is the time to actually make use of Shuten Donji's eliminate skill. Right, so you can see, uh, it's actually very situational. But when it's that situation, there's no other skill you'd rather have. So, yeah, as much as possible, oh, without doing the wrong ones. Do we, do we fully do it? No, I don't even see. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Our hit points are full once again. Okay, stage 15. 
Okay, we got these two girls, which uh, this one needs nine or more water rune stones, this one needs nine or more fire. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and use this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're just gonna focus on the fire first. Um, so it's actually pretty convenient for this shooting game because um, what you need to dissolve is already part of the team. So you, you have to dissolve water and fire attack anyways. I personally, my team is going to be a pain because I'm running a wind team. So I need to dissolve wind, dissolve water, <laughs> and I need to dissolve fire. Hmm. Which is quite a pain indeed. Yes, full attack man should take it away. Alright, stage 6. Okay, so. Got Serpent Guy here, 8 headed Viper O Yamata. 4 arcade defense, which is not going to be an issue for your shooting doji, so if you have him, please use him. So this might look like a difficult stage, but uh, unless you're like running the Kiriti team or something like that, which I think is going to be slightly more challenging. Because if you are using any of the other 4 attributes, you're actually dealing 1.5 times damage to the Kiriti. So 400k, damage, uh, 400k defense is not actually 400 k to do somewhere near that to actually break the defense. And then with that, this stage is done. Pretty much. Okay, stage 17 uh, is going to be another challenging stage for some. You're going to have oh, 5 rounds. Why 5? We could have got 3 to 5 rounds of debuff. We managed to get 5. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's what he does. And she will double strike each turn. Which may seem bad at first, but uh, we've got quite a bit of hit points to tank and hits. Plus the fact that we have Shoot and Doji to do a crap ton of recovery, so that's good news. So for Endless Wheel, I think basically you can't let two, like let's say uh, for instance this battle or any sort of mini boss where there's two mobs, uh, just try to take down one. I wasted the diamond also. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take down one before both attack you at the same time, I guess. Yep. Nope. We'll be fine. We're dealing lots of damage, I think. <laughs> Hopefully! Okay, that was a terrible s swipe. Uh, we'll down the guy. Increase attack. We can do this. I mean, we've got three Tamamos to use. So, we gotta kill this guy. For sure. Let's go for a full attack. So it's good to wear out the debuff before you reach the next battle because this battle is going to be quite difficult as well. Where is it? Megalodon again? Uh, yeah, I think it's a Megalodon before the second move. enough to at least kill him. <coughs> okay, and her as well. So and we have two, we have still two more turn of the bomb. Yeah. But okay, we got two other Tamamo, so that's fine. Now enemy number of attacks increased by one per refined room so present towers the max of three extra attacks. Actually, this round is really easy. You just get rid of all your refined moon stars and you won't hit you that much. So, that's one strategy. The other one is just to go all, all crazy on him. So, we're gonna do that strategy where... What? Are we gonna get rid of all refined moon stars or are we just gonna fight him? Mm, by having a 2 turn, you still have a 2 turn debuff. Okay, so... So, let's get all refined moon stones. I mean, the tower can topple. <laughs> we're gonna let a tower topple. He's gonna hit us, but we have no refined rune stone, so he's gonna hit us for 4,000 only. Okay, whoa! Oh, back up. Alright, so now we got two turns to kill him as well, and our debuff just disappeared. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, maybe that's an interesting way of getting rid of debuff, which we just discovered right now. So now we can make back some refined rune stones, and at the same time really hit him for as hard as we want. Uh, 
Thunder one. Should be able to take it down next turn. Mm, we need to kill him this turn, yeah. Unless you want to do another turn and get a reward for finding box. Should we use a convert or should we... Ah, let's just go for it. Team, you can heal that up quite quickly, so that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Done. Done. Okay, so we got uh, Persephone here, which is battle 19 out of 21. He's the barrier <coughs> for uh, Mono Water Team. Yes, this is pretty much what Mono Water Team is like. FML, you know. Okay, so we're just gonna go for the strongest attack that we can. Should we use a There's a buff here. Standing it up. Shooter dojis will pierce that quite nicely. Uh, should we use the comfort? No, I'm not here. Okay. So we're gonna go for another round of this. So one way to break through this uh, stage for mono water, if you guys only have mono water, uh, is to use like Jake the Boo. Uh, if you guys actually got it from uh, the common time phone summon, that one, that, that card have a feeder, feeder if I'm not wrong, that, that cracks. Right, so it should be quite easy to train up and then you get, it should be more than enough to take down this uh, stage if you're running mono water only as of now. One more set, I just need one more set of fire. Okay. This should be hopefully good enough to punch through. Alright. Just shoot in. <laughs> shoot in only. I was like, water guys, you are sitting on the bench, you don't need to attack there. So you guys see, if you can get two shoot ins, it's so powerful, right? You don't even need the rest of your team to attack. Alright, so we're faced off with uh, Angel of Doom Lucifer here, ignores all damage reducing willpower, so attack of 14,000, defense of 18,000, not going to be super challenging for us, we're going to buff here. Uh, we're just going to go for it. So Lucifer is actually pretty much like the final boss of the entire Endless Wheel because 20... No, battle 21 is actually quite a uh, straightforward battle, I guess. So your main... The main boss for your endless wheel will be Lucifer here. Alright, we did 1918. Should be good. Alright, swiped him away with one shot. Okay, so now we're on the final stage, which as Aaron mentioned is pretty much a giveaway stage. Got, uh, okay, we can't use Tamamo, sad times, and we have enemy text thrice, and he's on cooldown 3. Enemy randomly locks and eliminates skill. Okay, uh, to be fair, Madhead still has 100k defense there, so we just gotta make sure that you get rid of that. I'm gonna do a convert here. Uh, shoot in. Shoot in water to fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can do that, but I think we will have more attack overall by using the 4 uh, Tamamos. Plus, we don't want fire versus water for the map there. So, let's go for it. Ooh, 
have done. Should be, hopefully, 154 times multiplier. Sweet. Whoa. The world, the tornado of doom, <laughs> getting rid of both mobs. Okay, so, uh, well, our battery power is on zero <laughs> from all that. But hopefully, guys, uh, through that, you picked up a few tips on, you know, how to uh, look at passing the uh, endless wheel. And uh, if you haven't yet, please do try it out. It's fun, you know, it's challenging, and it costs zero stamina, and there's no limit on how many times a day you can enter it. So you can just go and spam it to your heart's content for a bit of good practice, all right? So on the 20th, which is on Monday, there's gonna be the new bi-weekly stage. Uh, it's gonna be the Thunder one, yeah? So which ones have we had so far? So, so far we had the Wolf Shaman. Yep, the Water Bear. one. The fire, Yaffi the bear, yep. And we have the snake shaman. Yes, so next week will be the uh, Lutz the saber tooth shaman, okay? So he's got a saber tooth tiger with him, and uh, if you guys are training up a thunder team, you're missing the last one or two members, I think it's definitely a good time to be picking up on him as well. Okay, so thanks guys for tuning in, and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, hope you guys learned some tips or two to help you in your journey through Chrono Skate, and uh, yeah, anything you want to wrap up on? No? <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys next time there. Alright, see ya!